Good morning and welcome to the presentation about system upgrades with SW updates. So like the agenda of the day, so we're going to start with a short introduction uh, about um, the system update in the embedded system. Uh, I'm going to do like a quick introduction about myself as well. Uh, after, we're going to speak about the architecture of SW update, how it works. Um, I mean, how it works. Then we're going to uh, to explain how you can customize SW update to fit uh, like the needs that you uh, the needs of your of your solution. How to adapt SW update to your solution, and then we'll talk about the integration to the different BSP. So. You know, like there is a lot of talk about Beetroot, about Yocto. So how do you integrate uh, SW updates in those solutions? Uh, we'll finish, uh, I forget at like this point, but we'll finish, uh, if we have some time, uh, with a demonstration um, on, the, um, on the Nitrogen 6X. So about me, a uh, quick introduction. Uh, so I'm like a, an open, open source enthusiast. Uh, I'm working for Witekio, uh, a company located uh, in Bellevue in the Washington state. So it's not really far from here. Uh, and um, yeah, like, so basically I'm doing, uh, I'm mainly working with Android and Linux, uh, doing BSP adaptation, driver development, uh, more generally speaking, system integration. So like uh, the presentation uh, of today uh, has been based uh, highly on the, on the boundary devices. Uh, devices. Um, so like there is like the Cyberlite and the Nitrogen 6X. Um, so the reason for that is uh, the, like, this presentation has been made in collab collaboration with uh, Gary Bisson from Boundary Devices and also Stefano Babic, who is like the maintainer uh, of this solution. There is also like uh, another board, uh, the Warp X uh, device. Uh, so if yesterday you were like at the technical uh, showcase, they were like you know like uh, showing like uh, their device, uh, how you could use SW update on their device. So quick introduction. So why do we need to have a software update solution for your embedded device? Uh, the first and more important, uh, like the most important reason is uh, for bug fixing and security issue. Uh, a few years ago, you know, like there was like a huge issue in the OpenSSL library with the hard bleed uh, issue. Uh, and you know, like basically like uh, all the secure communication with like the different like, devices was, you know, like uh, wasn't secure anymore. So uh, when you're working with devices, uh, your device, you know, like you don't necessarily uh, like have an access to the device. So sometimes, you know, like they are like in the space, in the middle of the ocean, or you don't have like any physical access to the targets. So you need to have a way to update your device to basically fix those bugs, those, those security like issues. Obviously, like another reason is to add new features to your device. Uh, you know, like when you start the development of your like uh, of of your solution. Uh, you might you know like you are using the Linux kernel at a certain state, or you are using like some OpenGL library or some like other devices at a certain state. Two or three years after, you know like uh, you realize that you know like your video streaming or you know like some of the performance of the board are pretty you know like pretty low. So you want to like basically like. Uh, Enjoy, you know, like just just want to profit, uh, like the other like uh, new features was being developed uh, within the two or three years. Uh, so this is what you know, like you need basically like have like a system update solution. So like there is different solution uh, on the market uh, like today. I mean like as you can see uh, on the different booth, there is Mender uh, where like you know was a solution. There is Resin.io. There is SW Update. There is like ten or fifteen different like you know solution uh, like slash framework to uh, handle to manage this kind of software updates. So today we're going to focus only on SW updates. So it's it's a framework. So it's not you know like an end-to-end solution. It just gives you like the tools to basically like um, um, create a software like you know solution for your target for your product. Uh, it's totally open source. So it's under like uh, the GPL v2 uh, license, and it has been created and maintained by Stefano Babic from Danx. So uh, it's kind of you know, a project related also with the uh, U-Boot developers. 
So like the idea of the project is to cover like all the aspects uh, of you know of the software update solution from like the creation of your of your image to like the download to the target and also like the flashing of the different devices that you want to update. Um, this software has been developed um, based on like uh, the past experience of the different customer and users who are currently using this solution. So this is a solution that is currently used in production and by some customers. Uh, at the beginning, you know, like there is always some bug in the software. There is some always some features missing, and so like the more the customer are using these features, the more you know like, uh, you're going to uh, have like a, like a better solution. Um, I'm just sorry. That, thank. Forget to plug my my laptop. <laughs> um, so also like at the end, if I have some times, I would like to to show you like a practical approach uh, by doing like a demonstration um, of a basic software update uh, on one of my board here. <laughs> sorry about that. So the architecture of SW updates. So what do you want to update? So there is different pieces uh, uh, in your solution that you want to update. The first one could be the bootloader. We're not going to cover this in this talk uh, because this is something that generally you don't want to do it. Uh, like the main reason is uh, it's something highly dependent uh, on the features from your SOC, from your board, from, from the hardware. Uh, a lot of SOC uh, doesn't provide a way to uh, have a redundancy of your bootloader in the memory. So it's going to basically load the bootloader at a specific address in the memory, jump to it, and that's all. So if it's failed, the board is not going to boot anymore. <coughs> so you want to update the kernel as well. I mean, like, it's something like, uh, that you definitely want to do. Uh, the device tree, the root file system, and also like, the application, application data if you, if you want. So like the first question that we can have like, uh, in our mind is, why don't we use a, a package manager? Uh, most of the distribution, uh, like Debian, Fedora, you know, like they have you know, like their own package manager, where like, they support updating like, any packages. Uh, it's pretty nice, you know, like, I mean, if you need to update one of the package, it's like the, sm like the, like the footprint uh, of the update is pretty small. Um, the problem that we have with the package manager is it's not atomic in general. So like what we are like uh, uh, saying like uh, by not being atomic is if there is a poor failure in the middle of the updates, uh, you basically have to, uh, you need to have a human uh, intervention to fix you know, like the corruption that the update might have created. Uh, it's also like a really hard for like testing and support. Um, so when you develop an embedded uh, like a sol uh, product, basically you uh, generally have you know like uh, the manufacturers uh, who's gonna create you know like uh, like like the software, and um, it's gonna provide a support against some specific version of the libraries uh, or like a specific version of the application. So you have you know like a team like a test team dedicated to uh, to test like to make sure that everything is supported and working properly, and. If you use a package manager, it's really hard to track all the different versions of the libraries that you're going to install. Like the tracking is really hard uh, for like, you know, like, um, for the different version, uh, for the different updates. And obviously there is more places where things can go wrong. You know, like, I mean, like you don't flash only one file, you flash different things. There's like a lot of different steps. So it's, it's really based uh, on the experience. So some people tried, and at the end, they just fall back to you know, like another solution, uh, more you know, like SW updates. So like, um, the architecture of, the, um, of SW updates, so it's a standalone binary. Uh, so like, there is like, uh, the main core features, which is like, the installer. So this is, uh, this is like, the, main, uh, like, the main function of, uh, of the application. So it relies on, um, on a description file uh, that contains you know, like the description of your updates. And it's going to be parsed. So like, there is a different library to uh, handle like, this parsing of the file. Um, there is also some notification. Because when you are doing an update, you want, to, you, you want to, uh, to, to know what is the current status, if it's failing, if it's succeed, if it's still like, in progress. So like, the notification is going to basically like, uh, give you the uh, possibility 
to have this kind of information either in, in the system log or over the network or like anything that you can think about. And you have like different handlers. So when you do like an update, you want to update different devices. And to access those devices, you have different libraries, different applications. So you have you know, like an API who just encapsulates uh, these kind of, um, uh, this kind of hand handlers. And you have also like uh, an external API to communicate with some web browsers, some local storage, or some custom protocols. So it's, it's, it's very like, you know, like, it's very small, but this is like, you know, like uh, the idea of the project. So <coughs> when we talk um, about uh, atomic updates, there is two different techniques to, uh, to achieve this. Um, like the first one um, is like what we call like the single copy. Uh, the idea of the single copy is uh, your bootloader uh, is going to be responsible to detect that you need to uh, update your system. Uh, this detection uh, is obviously not uh, managed by SW updates, uh, but you could uh, just imagine uh, pressing a, a, a GPIO button on your board and uh, it's going like, to you know, fall back to this image. Or it could be like, like the detection of a USB thumb drive with a specific file on it. So the idea is when your board is going to detect that a new update is available, um, it's going to basically like start an init RAMFS image. So the init RAMFS is you know, just like an image, uh, a small root, like a small system containing SW update, and it's going to run in the DDR. And so you're not going to use the current you know, like file system. So if you flash your root file system and you got a poor failure in the middle, the flags in the bootloader are not going to be updated. So basically, like, the bootloader knows that the, the, like, the update has failed. And so it's going to load again uh, like this rescue image to do like, you know, like the update again. And the second, the second solution, which is like the most popular, uh, is like the double copy, uh, or like the double partition. There is different name for, for, for it. Uh, so the idea is to have kind of like a ping pong like architecture between two partitions. You basically have to, du to uh, duplicate everything. All your partition has to be duplicated. The, uh, the idea is to have one active partition where like your system is currently running, and the other one, the inactive, you know, like the standby like, you know, like a solution. So your bootloader, the first time, he knows that the active partition is going to be the, the first SD card. So he's going to run you know, like, uh, the software on the first partition. And so when you detect like, a new update, you want to install it. And so you are going from this partition to install you know, like, the other partition. And so the update is going to update the bootloader, like the different flags, to say, hey, now like, you know, like, the, new, you know, like, the new active partition is the other one. So when you are going to reboot your board, the bootloader is going to start this partition instead of this one. So if we imagine you know, like a poor failure in the middle of the update, it's totally fine because we will always have a, like an active partition we, uh, which is working. Because this one, like, like the update of the bootloader, is done at the very end, where like, we're sure that you know, like, uh, both partitions are kind of like working. So as, as w update, uh, it's a Linux user space application. Um, we could think, uh, I mean, like a lot of people are thinking uh, of doing solution either like in the bootloader directly or like a bare metal application. Um, it's more useful, it's more simple um, to do like a Linux user space application because you can just profit of all the different tools from the Linux kernel, all the drivers, all the different libraries. It's super easy like for the parsing, you know, you have like the different library, which is available for, you know, like, uh, for the Linux application. You have access to all the different drivers from your kernel. So for the networking, for you know, like the access to the USB, my storage. You, you have basically, like, it's more generic than the bootloader. And also, um, the bootloader, like, you know, like, they are well maintained, uh, they are working pretty well, but they don't contain you know, like, all the bug fixings uh, that you, know, like, you have in the Linux kernel. Uh, it's a full update solution only. So we, it doesn't support uh, like a port, uh, like, the, like a partial update. So basically it's uh, either we update, like we update the whole image or nothing. Uh, there is, so you can think that, oh yeah, it's gonna be like a huge image, uh, but you can generate like some really small footprint uh, 
system with SW update in it. Uh, I think Stefano like, uh, was able to uh, uh, generate like a compressed RAM disk of four megabytes. Uh, four megabytes is something that you can even fit in your spinal flash. It's generally used for like a rescue image. So uh, like if your system is failing to, uh, to, uh, to boot, you, you have like a fallback that you can you know, like, uh, have SW update waiting for like an update from like over the air or for like a mass storage. There is different features, uh, different features uh, like available. Um, so like first, like the different interfaces uh, like supported by SW updates. Uh, first one, uh, like local, you know, like uh, devices. So your USB, like uh, like thumb drive, SD card, UART, anything that you can think about. Uh, most popular, uh, you can do like over the air updates. So like there is many like uh, like uh, HTTP, so like a direct link to like uh, to the file. Uh, some web-based like solution, uh, Hogbits. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this after. Uh, there are some security features. Um, we're going to talk about this uh, at the end of the presentation, but security is uh, uh, a critical and uh, an important you know, like, uh, point for, like, uh, for like, an update solution. And it supports a, a lot of different like, uh, handlers. Uh, so the handlers is, as we said, like, what's going to manage your different you know, like, uh, um, uh, features from the kernel. And uh, it supports also like, uh, a streaming. So like basically, like you don't have a copy on the target because the updates uh, image can be really huge. Uh, it can be bigger than your, your DDR, uh, and so like um, uh, what you want to do sometimes is just to uh, once you receive like you know like a, a stream, you want to do like the update on the fly. So like um, everything starts uh, basically with a file. This file is uh, .sw. Uh, it contains basically. Uh, one, uh, one file, which is the SW like, description, which describes like, the whole image. Uh, like this image, so in this SW file, you will have the SW description file and all like, the images, uh, all the binaries that are required for your updates. Um, everything is encapsulated into like, a CPIO archive. Uh, so like, the choice of CPIO uh, is just Easy, it's just because it's a simple format that is that is easy to to parse and to use. Um, so yeah, like uh, like the, uh, let's see like a, a real example. So this is basically like uh, uh, how like you know like your like a uh, description file looks like. You have like the main node. I'm not sure if you can see clearly, but uh, you have like the main node named software. So everything is described like in the Lua language, and so like you describe like the whole update. So this is a main block. You can have some broad specific node. Uh, for example, here, like we, we choose, you know, like a nitrogen 6X. It could be like the warp X. It could be like a, like a, a, a big old black. It could be like any like different hardware. You can specify different att uh, attributes. So like you can say, hey, this image is only, you know, uh, only um, uh, available uh, on this specific, specific, specific revision of the hardware. And after you have like the description of the different handlers. So for example, here we're going to say, hey, in my image, in my SW file, I have like a rootfs.ext2 uh, file uh, that I want to flash on this specific device using this specific uh, handlers. And so you can specify also like a SHA-256 uh, hash values to make sure that at the end the update has been properly uh, like written to your device. You have also like uh, different handlers for the scripts. So the script that you can run before and after like uh, the update, if you want to do like uh, uh, some modification uh, into your system. Uh, so like a quick example uh, for the USB. So how does it work is you have the binary on your target and you just specify the dash I option and the name of the SW. Um, after you can have, like you can specify also a public key if you need like uh, the security features. Uh, but generally, you want to, to make it automatic. Uh, you want to you know when you plug a USB thumb drive that you don't have to do anything on the device. So to do that with USB, you have like different you know, like, uh, solutions depending on uh, UDEV or MDEV, uh, like, like the ones that you are using on your, like, uh, on your, um, on your WordPress system. So there is two tutorials. The first one, uh, it's a link to, like, uh, to, uh, to do like auto-mount uh, with MDEV. And the other one is a link to the free electron training. 
uh, on how to do like the hot plugging with UDev. Uh, there is a support of OT update, uh, so like uh, SW update uh, support. I mean, like um, they, are, they have like an embedded uh, web browser uh, inside the solution, uh, which is named uh, Mongoose. Uh, so it's a different project, but it has been integrated in SW updates. Uh, so you can just start it and access uh, your device from like a web browser and select the file and just upload it. You can just specify like a, a direct link to like a direct HTTP link. And you can use another solution named uh, Hogbit. So Hogbit is kind of like special. I mean, like it's, uh, it's a software update uh, management solution. Uh, it's really hard to describe. I'm not an expert of Hogbit, but the idea is uh, you create like different, you know, like uh, software, like uh, uh, software distribution, software module, where you just, you know, like uh, uh, specify the different files that you want to, to use. And um, uh, basically at the end you have like, um, we don't see it clearly, but you have the list of the targets that you have like on the network, and you, you have like the list of the updates <coughs> that you created in Hogbit, and you can just drag and drop, and you will have like a different status um, uh, of the current updates. Um, so like this uh, Hogbit is supported uh, via Suricata daemon into like um, uh, into SW updates. So it's a custom daemon that has been developed to support the protocol uh, of Hogbit. Um, the deployment of this solution is pretty complicated. Uh, you rely on uh, Apache Tomcat on Spring. Uh, I mean, like, it's pretty heavy to compile and it's pretty hard to, uh, to install on your, on your server. Uh, so personally, like, uh, my advice would be like, for you to use Docker. So you have like, different uh, images uh, for like, Docker that you can use and it will make your life really easy. If you are not really familiar with Docker, there is plenty of documentation, and there, are, there is also some presentation uh, at uh, the ERC. So, how do you customize SW updates? So, like every, you know, like every like, open source project, I mean, like for U-Boot, the Linux kernel, build root, you have like a, a make menu config. Uh, so, it just allows you to customize all the different features uh, from SW updates. Uh, so, for example, if you don't want to support any like uh, over-the-air updates, you can just disable like you know the web browser and Soricata. If you want to disable like some specific parser, you can do it. If you want to uh, enable the security security features, everything is contained here. So, the first thing that you can use to customize uh, like uh, SW updates uh, is the handlers. So, the handlers are going to uh, basically like uh, 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 translate uh, the fact that you want to uh, flash an image to the USB to uh, what is supported uh, like in Linux, uh, like in your BSP. So the first one that you know you want to badly want to customize is uh, like a handler for FPGA. So there is a, a lot of you know like uh, of uh, of products where you have like you know like uh, the microprocessors which is connected to either like an FPGA or either you know like a microprocessors. Generally, like this kind of protocol, this kind of communication is too specific to have uh, something common, you know, to, to have like a unique API for that. So like um, for your solution, you can just define uh, a custom handlers. So here, like uh, it's not doing anything. It's just printing basically like, uh, like uh, the image. Um, but you have a, a Lua framework uh, provided by SW updates where you can just, you know, like uh, request and you just define a function and it's this function you just describe how you communicate to your FPGA or your, uh, or your microprocessors, how you basically you update like this device. So you don't have to write all, like, uh, all the different handlers. Uh, there is some provided by the framework. Uh, I'm gonna show you like an example on how it looks like, uh, but basically you have some for like, uh, the different flash devices. Uh, some for the UB volume, some for like the SD card, some to update the U-boot environment, uh, and also like the one that you can create. Uh, so just an example for like uh, for the spinal. Uh, so here it's just you know an images where in uh, our like uh, SW file we have a file named uboot.sb. So in this case we're going to update the bootloader, which is not necessarily like the best example. Uh, so we say like, like the handlers is type flash. So we know like it's gonna use the MTD uh, like uh, libraries to do like the updates. 
and we specify the device. Uh, there is three other like, attributes that you can use. Um, uh, for example, here, we just want to install it if it's not already installed on the target. So you have, you know, like, uh, you have different files uh, on the target that SW can use to, de to detect the current version of the bootloader that is installed on, on your targets. And based on that, it can know that if it's required to do the update or not. So an example for the UB volume, so it's always the same things. So you specify the file name and the type, and after the other attributes are like specific to, uh, uh, to your handlers. Um, you have like the SD card, which, which is like the most popular one. So here like we can say, hey, uh, um, be careful, uh, my image is compressed. So don't forget to uncompress the image before doing the installation. Uh, you have some to update the U-boot uh, environment. Uh, so be careful about this one. Um, uh, obviously, uh, there is no like uh, atomic way to update the U-boot environment. So you need to uh, to make sure that uh, in your U-boot configuration, that the uh, like the option for like uh, the environment rather than C is enabled. So basically, that U-boot uh, is uh, writing the environment to different uh, places uh, in your device. Uh, so it's really useful if you want to update the boot arcs or uh, like, you know, like modify uh, like, uh, any like, uh, parameters in your boot. And also like for some Lua scripts and, so, and some shell scripts as, as well that you can use. Uh, one feature that is uh, the most you know, useful is what we call the collection. So the collection is what you are going to, to need, what you are going to use to implement the double copy, the double partition uh, solution. So a collection is basically like a main node like, that we can call like stable, for example. Um, it can be any name uh, except the keyword used by SW update. And so you are going to define uh, basically like the main partition, so like the first, you know, like, uh, first partition of the SD card, and the standby, like the other like, alternative solution. And so um, how do you choose, how do you know, like, how do you know like, uh, uh, which one you need to run is when you start SW update, so before like, starting SW update, you need to know what, are, like, what is like, the current active partition. So once you detect this, you can specify uh, with you know, like, an option to say, hey, uh, if you receive an update, you need to, uh, to use this node and not this node. So you always you know, like, uh, do you know, like, uh, the ping pong uh, like, um, uh, like, uh, updates. Um, so the detection of the active partition is obviously uh, left to, like, uh, to the users. Uh, like, uh, it's really too hardware specific, too, you know, like, too, like, too, spe too specific for SW update to, to detect this. There is different you know, like, idea to do that. You, can, you, you could use a flag from your bootloaders, or you could just parse uh, like, uh, like the command line argument provided by the kernel. So the integration. So the first one, Yocto. Uh, I think Yocto is pretty popular like uh, everywhere. Uh, so like uh, Stefano uh, is basically maintaining as well, I mean, in parallel of SW updates, uh, a meta layers for like uh, for for Yocto. So like uh, by default, um, the meta layers uh, only support a single copy uh, a single copy scheme. Uh, it doesn't mean that it cannot support a double copy or anything else. It's just by default what it's providing is for this, uh, for this scheme. So uh, you can use Bitbeck SW, uh, SW updates, uh, and it's going to generate a file in the temp deploy uh, directory. So it's, it's pretty standard. I mean, like if you use uh, Yocto, it's pretty standard. Uh, everything is generated at the correct place. Uh, so like the image generated by Bitbeck SW update is not a SW file. It's just like an init, uh, init RAMFS um, that contain SW update so that you can use to like basically like uh, um, uh, that you can use to run your different, you know, like uh, updates. If you want uh, to generate like a SW like uh, update from Yocto, uh, there is an example uh, for like the bigger button black. So you have like a recipe uh, provided in the same layer, uh, which is bbb-swupdate-image, uh, and it's gonna generate at the same place, so in the deployed directory, uh, a file with a .sw like, uh, extension. 
so if you want to customize this, uh, in the meta layers, there is the SW description file, and there is like a, the recipe as well uh, to customize everything that you need. Um, there is also, you know, like um, a, a class uh, that, that is provided um, um, for like uh, for the customization of your different images. So um, let's take an example. Um, so, like for example, you want to load like uh, like uh, the the kernel uh, because you know the init RMFS doesn't contain the kernel. So, like um, uh, you want to lo to load first at a specific you know like memory address the, the kernel. You want to load the device tree if needed, and after you want to load you know like the uh, um, the init RMFS generated by by Bitback, you want to load it at a specific you know like uh, memory address, and after you just boot it. At the end, you know, like you will have a shell with SW update uh, like running. Uh, the default behavior uh, is uh, basically like waiting, you know, like for like uh, an update uh, from like uh, the web browser. But you can customize this to anything that you can think about. Um, and this is where, after you know, like you can use like the SW file uh, that you generated with the other like recipe. The other solution uh, is Buildroot. So uh, Buildroot, there is uh, a package named SW Update, uh, which has been mainline for like a few months or few years. Not sure when he, he got like, into like, uh, the project. So you, there is a configuration that you can use to uh, enable it. Uh, there is a default configuration uh, that you can obviously modify uh, through like Buildroot. Uh, so there is you know, like, um, an option to make uh, that you can use, so it's make SW update dash menu configs. Uh, it's the same as for the BusyBox or like the other, you know, like uh, uh, package that supports like the K config. So um, build root when you uh, generate your image doesn't generate any uh, any any RMFS. It doesn't generate any SW file. Uh, basically, you have to do everything manually. Uh, so, uh, like the solution, like the more like standard way, um, uh, is basically to go to the output images directory where you have, you know, like uh, your like, different file, and to like basically with the script, or you can do it, you know, manually. But with the script, you just create like the CPIO archive. So the first file that you need to put in the CPIO, CP, CPIO archive is the SW description file. And after you just append the other file into the archive that are required uh, by the updates, and so at the end you will have basically uh, a file you know like named .sw. So you could use it, uh, for example, on your target. You could mount uh, like your USB like thumb drive, uh, run SW updates uh, with a path to the file, and just reboot if everything worked. Uh, one of the features which is really interesting for the different customers is to target, you know, like a specific hardware and software revision. Uh, sometimes, you know, like uh, like in production, you have like uh, two or three different hardware revision, uh, and you don't want to generate, you know, like uh, like uh, three or four different images uh, SW file. Uh, so what you can do is you can uh, you can specify like a, a specific target node, and so like. Um, uh, this one is going to overwrite uh, like, uh, like the behavior of the parent node. Uh, so for example here, uh, we can think about the Natural Gen 6X or the, or the Warp X. They have like four different revisions. Uh, so we know that like, the update will be the same on the revision 1, 1.0, uh, 1.2, and 1.3, but it's going to be different on the 1.1 1 .1, uh, because maybe they change, you know, like, uh, uh, the, like the SD card, uh, you know, like, uh, like support, or like the EMMC, or you know, just the way on how like, the board was working. Uh, you could have also like, you know, like, um, a generic you know, like, behavior in the main node and just overwrite a specific behavior in a specific node for a specific revision of your hardware. Um, so like, the verification of the hardware like, re a revision uh, is only uh, available if you enable like, you know, like, uh, um, the option. And um, how, you do, how do you specify like, this, uh, this information? You have two different files, uh, so you can customize this as well. But in slash etc hardware revision, you specify the name of the board and the revision of the board. And for like, the software version, is the same. So you can specify the different software install with the, 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 like, the, like, the version of the software. So an example on, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, of the system logs that you can have, uh, if it's compatible or not compatible. 
So the first one, like everything is running perfectly. Uh, so we can see like it detected like a revision 1.2. Uh, it's compatible with our updates. In the other case, uh, like it detected that you know like uh, the software update was not compatible with the hardware, so it just canceled it. Uh, important uh, like uh, like uh, features uh, security. Uh, so for the security, uh, there was like a lot of conversation on the Google Groups and the mailing list to uh, to know how to achieve it. Uh, like with like in the most simple way and you know like uh, the most you know yeah the most simple way. So basically, we sign only the SW uh, description file. Uh, the whole image, the whole remaining image, is not signed. Uh, but once you enable the like uh, like uh, like um, the security features, once you enable the fact that you, your image is signed, you have to declare like uh, a hash value for every images. If you don't specify it, uh, SW update is not gonna, you know, like update the image. Uh, the idea is uh, when when you like you install like you know like the image on your targets, uh, you know for sure that your description file is correct because you are like you have verified the signatures, and so like this file contain like the hash values of the different images, and so it just you know like allow you basically to uh, uh, just analyze just to parse this more like like the headers to install the targets. If we sign the whole image, the problem that we have is we need to uncompress, we need to install basically like the update on the device before doing the verification. And it can be really tricky if your image is bigger than, you, than your memory, basically. Uh, so you can, uh, how does it work? It just rely on the open SSL uh, like uh, utility from Linux. Uh, so you can generate a private key, you generate a public key. And so you have like you know, a small command line where you can just use uh, to generate like a signatures. So once you do that, you are sure that nobody can tamper basically your image. Um, so if we take like the example of build root to generate the SW file, it's exactly the same. It's just you know like we added like the signatures right after like uh, the description file, and we just you know generate it uh, on the fly. Um, the signatures, uh, be careful, has to be, it's mandatory, it has to be right after the SW description file. So uh, don't put it after the root FS exe2, for example, otherwise it's not gonna work. And there is also like an API for like the external programs. Um, so like it give like the, this API is pretty simple. Uh, so it's implemented with the small structures where you have like a magic number uh, to make sure you know, like, uh, of the integrity of the data. You have a type, so a type of message that you want to communicate, and the data that you are like, exchanging with SW updates. Um, it's basically like allow you to, uh, have, to define some custom protocol uh, with SW updates. So you can just imagine uh, a client uh, requesting you know, like an install to SW updates. And so SW updates uh, is gonna check if it's ready to receive or to uh, uh, start a new update. Uh, once it's ready, it's gonna reply with the hack. So once the client receives the hack, it can send all the data, or you know, like, uh, like the CPIO, CPIO archive are going to be streamed to the target. And after the customer, even in the middle of, uh, of the communication, he can request the status uh, of the current update, just to know if it failed, if it succeeded, or if it's still like in progress. Uh, so like this communication is pretty uh, it's pretty simple. There is some like uh, example uh, available uh, in the source code of SW update uh, if you want to have like a better idea. So what are the next step basically uh, of SW updates? Uh, the first one uh, it's like the support of binary delta updates. Uh, the idea is okay like. An image is pretty big. You can have an image of two gigabytes, four gigabytes, uh, and you don't necessarily want, you know, like to update, you know, like to, to send everything. So there is some conversations, there is some discussion where like, you are all welcome to uh, uh, to come and give your idea to have a support of the binary delta update in SW updates. Uh, it's not something that is going to be like uh, uh, implemented if it's gonna break or if we think it's gonna break uh, like the solution. Uh, obviously, we want to add like more handlers. Uh, so for, you know, like the FPGA or like 
any other you know, like, uh, solution that you can think about. And also like being able to um, load the plugins uh, at the runtime. Uh, at the moment, everything is managed at the compile time. So like the handlers, uh, you, cannot, you, know, like you cannot define a handlers on the fly. So everything you need to recompile basically SW updates. Uh, we want to add more example and support for the evaluation board. Uh, at the moment, we support just you know, like a rescue image uh, and just like the big old bone black uh, in the case of, uh, of Yocto. Um, there is also like we want to, uh, to add more like, backend like Hogbits. So if you have you know, like your own solution and you want to be like supporting in SW updates, feel free like to uh, open a discussion uh, on, the, on the mailing list. Uh, and also like the support of a file system based persistent update status storage. It's pretty long this one. Uh, so basically the idea is uh, it's kind of relying uh, uh, on, on the bootloader on U-boot for the different flags. Uh, you can do whatever you want at the moment. It's not limited. It's just like the way on how like most people are doing. The idea is like a lot of boards, a lot of different solutions do doesn't necessarily uh, use U-boot or like bare box. They have like their custom, you know, bootloaders. So the idea is like these flags that, you know, like the bootloader needs to know like if you need to do like an update or like to know which partition he has to, uh, to boot uh, is to put those flags into like a specific like a device, uh, like a USB stick or like an EMMC to have kind of like, you know, like a, uh, a standard like API to, uh, to uh, implement this. Uh, so before like ending like the, the presentation, I just wanted to show you uh, if it's not going to fail uh, a demonstration on how it works. Uh, I really hope we you'll be able to see it. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it in the back of the room. I mean like, so basically like uh, I have a Nitrogen 6x uh, with build root running on the board. <laughs> Um, I have like an update file, a SW uh, update file available on my uh, USB thumb drive. And so I have like a double partition um, um, implementation. So, um, so here like uh, I have like a MMC BLK0, P1, and P2. And so the idea is I'm currently running, let's check this. I'm currently running on the first partition. Uh, so. Here, like the root device is currently running on the first uh, partition. And the idea is uh, I want to add a new command line. Uh, I don't have like the command line oh, come on. file. File is not available. So I want to make an update uh, to uh, have this available. So like the first thing that you want to do is uh, you want to mount you know, like, uh, your USB like, thumb drive. Uh, you want to check you know, what's available on the thumb drive. And so here we have like the nitrogen 6x.sw. Uh, and so we're going to run the updates. So I'm going to add like some logs. So you can add some, like you can increase the log level with the dash L option. And we're going to specify the dash I option. OK, my keyboard. And here it's a double, so it's a double partition. So you need to specify which one you want to update. Otherwise, by default, it's going to take the first one. Um, so here, I want to update the other partition. So the update is running. We got some information. Uh, it's currently found like the installer, 6x40. So let's see like if it really works. So you can reboot the board. Should be fast. Already hope. OK, it's starting. So let's check which partition we are running. So here, like it changed. So we are now like booting from like uh, the partition two. So uh, it's like going to be like uh, indicated here. And if we check, we have now like the file command uh, line available. Uh, so it's a basic example uh, explaining you know like uh, the double partition. Uh, I got the file uh, for like this demo like available. So let's zoom a little bit. Plus this one. And here like is the one that you know like I have like in my different slides. So like um, uh, I'm not sure you can see it clearly, like it's pretty it's pretty dark. <laughs> uh, but basically like the idea is uh, you define uh, like your uh, double partition uh, your collection uh, with the main node, uh, but this is not the one that we use. 
uh, we specify, we said, hey, we want to update this partition, basically. And we have also a custom script um, to update like the bootloader like an uh, environment. Uh, so there is like a different resources available. Uh, so there is a nice documentation uh, about SW updates. Uh, it's well maintained. It describes almost everything, anything about the piece uh, of the software. Uh, there is a lot of example, a lot of support about this. Uh, there is different presentation available uh, on the web about SW updates. Uh, there was one from Stefano Babic uh, directly uh, at the ELTE 2014. Uh, I provided a link to the Hogbit Docker if you want to use it. Uh, there is a readme to explain how you can set up this. Uh, there is also like a, an article from Bondari Devices uh, uh, explaining how to use uh, SW updates. So uh, feel free to, uh, to use it. And there is also like a mailing list uh, that you can use uh, to start a comment, like a, to submit your patches or to start you know, like, a, like a discussion uh, with like the different developers or users of the project. Uh, so this is the end of my presentation. Uh, so if anyone has a question. Yep, uh, okay. Uh, I just wanted to add one comment. Um, if you're using uh, open embedded or Yocto and using the meta SW update layer, uh, you can have, it, if you set the environment uh, variables for, the, uh, for your signing key, you can have it uh, also generate those uh, signature, those hashes on the signature for the SW update file as part of the build so you don't have to do it uh, manually. So. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Forgot to specify this, but yeah, like there is a lot of different like variables in Yocto that you can define to customize the process. Uh, oh. I'll have a couple of questions. Uh, first <laughs> of all, very good uh, presentation. Um, when you mentioned uh, streamed payloads, update payloads, do you support or do you think of supporting in the future uh, binary diffs or any kind of diffing so by uh, payloads? So uh, the binary diff, uh, the idea is not necessary to support them. There is some discussion about you know, like, uh, supporting like, a binary data update. Uh, but it's kind of like complicated to support them. I mean, like, to really support them. I mean, it's easy to implement this, uh, but it's uh, kind of like more complicated if you really want to have like, a stable solution for that. Uh, so yes, the plan is to, uh, to add these kind of features. Uh, but there is no deadline, there is no like, plan on when it's going to be available. Okay, my second question is, you mentioned at some point hardware compatibility yep. in your description file. Uh, what is the, how do you define the handle that actually queries for that specific revision? So uh, everything uh, has to be done, uh, okay, like, I think it was, yeah, this one. So like this information, uh, you basically have a file on your system which is slash etc hardware revision, mm -hmm. and it has to be generated before running SW update. Every, I mean, like, SW update cannot do like, any detection about you know, like the hardware. So you have like the user has to describe it. And it's the same for the software like version. I can pass my third question because it was already asked by the person before <laughs> me. Uh, and my last one is, do you have any generic interface with, with U-Boot, for example? Do you have any no, so the, the mechanism, UM or FW tools, whatever? Uh, so like the interface with U-Boot is uh, like the communication is relying with uh, the library uh, for it's like the lib U-Boot environment. Uh, the idea is not to rely on any bootloaders. I mean U-Boot is just you know like an example because uh, Stefano you know like is from Danx and uh, also supporting U-Boot as well. Uh, but the idea is also to support any kind of bootloaders. Uh, so having a common framework with the bootloader would be really tricky uh, because there is no standard way you know like to communicate with it. Uh, maybe later, I don't know, but. Yeah, the idea is that you would be like one of the most used nowadays in, in the boards that we see around us. Would make sense to have like a little bit of support in that regard. 
So there is a support, there is a handler for U-Boot. There is a handler that you can use and where you can just specify like, the name and the new value of your environment. And so basically, like this, I mean, SW update is linked against this library and it's gonna manage you know, like, the communication with U-Boot. So there is already like, you know, like a handler, there is already like a, a, standard, a standard API to communicate with U-Boot. Uh, but there is not a standard API to communicate to any bootloader. Okay. Uh, there is also like, uh, for example, uh, there is some discussion about Grub, so how to update, you know, like the argument from Grub as well. So that's why, you know, like they want to uh, have more something for like uh, the, the flags uh, that you are like putting in your like uh, SD card or you, in your MMC. So you don't rely basically like you don't communicate anymore with the bootloader, mm -hmm. but you just create a common place that, you know, like is, I mean, common between the kernel and the bootloaders and they, like, they, can, they can both use. It's basically like the idea uh, to, uh, to implement kind of like a, the standard like API for the communication with the bootloader. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other question? Thank you very much and if you...